いそう。The heck? Huh? There you go. Whatever you plant over there is going to be fertile. Fertile. Great job. Okay, pry. Okay, now we're gonna lift. Put it in this bucket. Oh. You crop the roof off. Look at you. Whoa! Look at you. Hey guys, how's it going? It has been a beautiful day so far. We woke up to rain and it rained for several hours, which we live in high desert, so any rain we get, especially this time of year, is a gift. An absolute gift. It just makes everything so happy. We get to turn off our drip system and we don't have to run around trying to make sure everything has enough water. Oh, yesterday it was hot. It was like low 90s and sunny and then we had a bunch of wind and it was our first really, really hot day, but you could feel that something was coming our way because the humidity was high and we're not used to that. So everything was suffering a little bit yesterday. So today it's glorious. And you saw we just planted two of the most beautiful little spruce trees. This blue spruce, the variety is Bonnie Blue, and these stopped me in my tracks the other day at the garden center. They were kind of hiding behind a hedge of peonies that were real tall. They were like this tall. So I could see just the very tippy top of this plant, but the color just drew me in. And it's one of those situations where I didn't even realize how bad I needed this color right here until I got it sitting here. And now the, the whole thing looks beautiful. I mean, we've got a lot of, a lot of opportunities to plant a lot of things in this flower bed. It's fairly vast. We, I think we've made pretty good progress but I feel like this one really elevated the space. Both of them really. You'll see when we get over there, that spot needed it as well. So basic stats on this tree right here, it'll grow about 25 feet tall and it'll get about 15 feet wide. And they're fairly fast growers. This is a, a blue spruce, so Picea pungens. Typically we see growth anywhere from 12 to 18 inches, maybe a little bit more than that in good years. So they're not super, super slow growing. So I think we're gonna see some major size here in the next three, four, five years. It's also rated down to a zone two. So what is that, like negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit? That's, that's so cold. We're in a zone six, so we don't need them to be down that cold. But for those of you in areas where it does get pretty chilly, this would be a good one. And I think it goes up to a zone eight. But the other thing that makes this one unique, other than the fact that, you know, it has such a bright color color, just that bright silver blue, is that the needles are atypically slender for a blue spruce. On the other blue spruce plants, you'll notice that their needles are much thicker, giving the plant a more bulky appearance, but these are so thin and fine, it gives it a little bit more of an elegant appearance. But you can see what kind of structure this will add to the garden. It'll be just like a giant version of what you're seeing right now, kind of that layered appearance. Oh, so excited about it. In our garden, I've leaned so heavily on spruce trees. Uh, you may have noticed. In fact, we can walk around. I'll show you a few of them. And there are a huge amount of them. I think there's some 13 different categories of spruce trees. I mean, this is a Picea pungens. Uh, so a blue spruce. There's also Norway spruce, Serbian spruce, Oriental spruce, white spruce. Uh, I can't remember all of them to list them all off, but uh, you're likely to find a spruce that will get the mature size you want it. There it is. I see the airplane. I could hear that sound. I'm like, I can't see where it's coming. Is it going to get closer? Hopefully that's not too loud. Anyway, you can find a spruce that will get to be the size you want it, the structure, the color you want it. I mean, all the way from miniature to massive, like this Norway spruce right behind me. And it's amazing that in the same family, look at that sky, 
it's so pretty today. But it's amazing that you can get something like this that's structured so open and huge or something like this. They look like two completely different types of plants. And this one, like I said, is a zone two through eight. I think as a whole, you'll find in the spruce family that they can tolerate a little bit more heat than a lot of other evergreens and they don't needle cast. So our pine trees tend to get brown needles in the center in the winter time, and we have to go out and clean them up in the spring in order for them to look nice. Like right here, we have a Vanderwolf pine, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous pine tree. I love the bicolor blue green. And you can see it's very happy here. This is its new growth so far. Starts here and goes all the way whoop, to the end there. I mean, a lot of growth. But what they do, and I think I did show it in an earlier video, is that right in the center here, kind of lower on their branches, they cast their needles and they turn brown and kind of yellow and we have to come in and clean them out. It's usually not a big deal until the plants get huge. You can still see a little bit of the, the cast needles in the center here, but it's just one little bit of extra maintenance you have to do with the pine trees here. This one, this is a blue sky Serbian spruce. I think Picea omarica. Oh, it's one of my favorite trees we have on our property. Earlier on when these cones come out, they are a bright purple color and then they fade to this beautiful, you know, just regular brown color, but they're very petite cones and they hold on. They don't fall off onto the ground like some others will. They're a very clean tree. Right over here, we have another Serbian spruce called Deruders, which I think this year is just starting to find its stride. I had it in a nursery container for two whole years and I shouldn't have done that. It was already root bound when I bought it and it stressed it out. You can kind of see if you look in there, there's some signs of stress, but I feel like it is just now. I mean, look at all the new growth. I think it's liking it. And right here, I think this might be a Picea abies. Is it? I'm not sure. It's a hillside upright spruce. It'll end up with a really interesting structure, 12 feet tall by six feet wide. I thought I heard somebody sneaking up behind me. What are you doing? Hey, Mama. What? Um, the paint is all dried up. <gasps> the paint on your plant stand? Yeah. Cool. Even, even the picture paint. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll have to go take a look. Coming this way, we've got another Norway spruce back in here, and then there's a weeping white spruce right here. Oh, look at that. Love the structure of that one. And the other Bonnie Blue spruce that we planted today ended up in this flower bed, which we've got a Corinthian linden, which only has a spread of 15 feet. Uh, and then we've also got a Shawnee Brave Bald Cypress, which the spread will be much bigger, so we did tuck it a little bit closer to the linden. But I wanna show you from this angle in particular, Oh, it's just perfect right there. We've got red, we've got green, we've got blue, and we've got yellow. The four colors right there, kind of tying this whole area in, and things are filling in nicely. Maybe we should flash back to what this area looked like just a couple of years ago when we planted those spring grove arborvitas. <laughs> so we do have the arbs in here, evergreen there with you, and they are doing really well, but my goodness, it looks like we were planting on the moon when, when we were out here doing that. We've got another spruce right here, which I cannot remember. Something north, north wind, or I can't remember, but it really is looking beautiful. What's Aaron? In? What are you doing over there? Paparazzi. Hey, paparazzi. <laughs> How funny. You're my one paparazzi. <laughs> and then we've also got a hoop side blue spruce right there, which will grow, boy, or maybe it's a fat Albert. I can't remember. It'll grow similarly to this one that we just put in the Bonnie Blue, but the color is so much more vibrant with this one. I'm just amazed and in love with this variety. I think it's great from this side as well. We haven't put our hose link up yet, so we will have the hose reel will be gone and we'll have a hose link. And then we haven't worked on really much on this side of the flower bed. I did plant this little Dobbs Frosted Juniper, which you know brings the yellow on this side and the evergreen interest. But I think having that weight right here will be just wonderful. You know what, I almost forgot. I did plant a little miniature spruce over here as well this spring. Look at that. <laughs> the, the sumac is encroaching at the moment. Uh, but this little guy is called a Push Norway spruce and it has pushed a bunch of new growth. I'm gonna have to maybe, well, it will grow about, I think, two to three feet tall and wide. I might need to relocate it. <laughs> I might need to dig it up and put it right here because this is the cat's meow nepeta. And then the tiger eyes has pushed some new growth. Um, well, that's its original stem. I've been trying to pull some of the suckers that come up, but I did want it to naturalize a little bit. So I'm happy about what it's doing, but that I think I just 
located a little bit too close. So we'll draw that out a bit. And we have a whole lot more spruces out here in the south garden as well as around our house. I think the main thing that you need to make sure of when you're putting spruces in is that you're putting them somewhere that's well drained. Um, like the first one that we planted, we actually bumped up a little bit high, like a couple inches above soil level, and then we mounted the soil up to the, the crown of the plant. That way water drainage will go away from the crown instead of settling in because it was in kind of a naturally low spot anyway. So you wanna make sure that they have well draining soil and you also wanna make sure to give them full sun. That means six to eight hours plus in a day. I mean, the more sun you can give them, the happier they're gonna be. The first year, we usually give them a fair amount of water just because they're getting established. We have a lot of heat, we don't want them to dry out. But after that, after they've established for a year, maybe two years, we start pulling water and not giving them quite as much and giving them a deeper soak. In fact, this year we're trying to shift our whole drip system to where we're not watering every single day. We're doing every other day for a longer amount of time and then hopefully we will be able to even go every three days. That's our goal in the end. We want to create some really strong root systems on these plants and the sun is just barely trying to peek through the clouds. So anyway, that is it for today. We usually try to tackle a little bit more, but the rain kind of uh, made it to where we didn't have quite as much time out here, which is totally fine by me. I will take rain any day. And it's so nice out here that we want to be able to enjoy it with the kids. Aaron and Benjamin and Samantha have been riding around having a great time and we're going to go continue on. I also have a bowl full of strawberries left in the refrigerator. We've just had so many strawberries. It's insane. I'm going to try my hand at making some strawberry fruit leather today. So I want to have time to do that. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and seeing this brand new beautiful variety of spruce that we introduced into our garden. I'm excited to show you guys as it starts to put on growth and as the areas develop around them. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.